and welcome to episode 12 of the Two Steps Forward Sneaker Podcast. Um, now, before we get too far into today's episode, I do just want to shout out the show links. So on social media, uh, on Instagram and Twitter, we are at Two Steps Pod. And then on YouTube, it's Two Steps Forward Sneaker Podcast. I want to try to start doing that in the beginning because I always forget to say it until the very end. Um, but for today's episode, we have another solo episode. So I actually had the flu during the week last week. Um, and because of that, you know, I may still be contagious, even though I'm at the end of uh, the symptoms, don't really have any fever or cough or any of that anymore. But because of the fact that I may still be contagious, didn't really want to do an episode with Reggie this week. Um, so another solo episode, but still a lot going on in sneakers. So did want to still put something out and, and get that information over to you guys. Um, so today is Sunday, February 2nd, as I'm recording this, it's about three o'clock in the afternoon, um, like 3.30 now. Um, but so the Super Bowl is going to be in a few hours, uh, Super Bowl 54, the Chiefs versus the 49ers. Um, so with the Super Bowl coming up, uh, I actually think the 49ers are going to win this game. Um, I'm rooting for the Chiefs, uh, but being a Patriots fan and seeing the Giants defense really take a toll with their pass rush on Tom Brady's ability to get the ball down the field and just, you know, have a clean pocket to throw the ball. I feel like something similar is going to happen today with Patrick Mahomes, where um, because of the 49ers ability to get pressure on the quarterback, it's going to make it really difficult for him to find space and to, um, you know, find his open receivers. Now, again, like I said, I am rooting for the Chiefs. I do want to see a nice high scoring game, as many people probably do want to see. But um, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Chiefs do win, but uh, the 49ers is the team that I think will actually win this game because, you know, the, the old cliche that defense wins championships. So because of that, uh, I do think it will be the 49ers. Um, but sort of piggybacking off of that, um, there's rumors that uh, Jay Balvin, who's performing at halftime with, I think, J-Lo and Bad Bunny, I want to say, but there's rumors that uh, he's going to be dropping a Jordan 1 today during the Super Bowl. So obviously, as you're listening to this podcast, the Super Bowl has already happened, um, and you'll know whether or not there's been a shock drop of those Jordan 1s. But these Jordan 1s are crazy. Like, I really, really hope I can I can hit these today if they do shock drop. But it's this super colorful Jordan 1 with these jagged edges. So if, if you're watching this on, on the YouTube, um, I have the NYC to Paris Jordan 1s here in front of me. But um, these... Uh, Jordan ones that, that Jay Balvin's going to be dropping are like no clean edges really anywhere on the shoe. So where you would normally see stitching and like on this pair that I'm holding up here where the gray goes to black, um, instead of that, it's just all jagged edges and super, super colorful, even around the swoosh, like the details on that are all jagged edges as well. Um, I think it's an interesting looking shoe and definitely would like to get my hands on it. Um, and I'm sure for other people that are into Jordan 1s and like colorful shoes, um, it's something that they'll be looking for too. I think it's probably one that I'll let Reggie speak for himself. Maybe we'll ask him next week, but um, I'll let Reggie speak for himself. But I, I don't think it's one that he would like. Again, he's not usually into the colorful shoes, but I do think it's a really good looking shoe and a really different looking design too. Like I've never seen anything like that on a Jordan. So when, whenever you have something like that, it's always one that I'm going to... I'm going to be interested in, in trying to get if I can. Um, but so we'll, I guess you guys can let me know, or I guess we'll just see if, if those do in fact release. Um, but so moving into some of the topics for today, the way today's episode is going to sort of work, it's going to be pretty much like a regular episode um, where we'll talk a little bit of releases uh, as well as um, because we have gotten into February now, there are some releases to actually talk about that have happened. Um, and so we'll get into those as well as some news and rumors. Uh, so this will be a little bit longer than last week's episode. It was only about half an hour, but still probably will be shorter since there's only one person speaking. Um, I think moving forward as well, uh, if there are other episodes that Reggie's not able to be a part of, um, I'll try to just, you know, sub someone else in just to keep two people at least, because I think it does add a little bit to have a, a differing perspective on certain topics as well. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so one one thing I did want to talk about, I know last week I mentioned that um, the topic of people buying Kobe's and reselling them um, and and how that was sort of thing, something that there was a very split opinion within the sneaker community. Um, it's sort of gotten to a different level even, um, both with the prices, but 
there are even retailers that are starting to do this now. So um, hat tip to, to Sock J because I saw him retweet this um, video from someone else or post from someone else on Twitter. Um, and then he also uh, put out a tweet of his own on the topic. But um, there is a retailer in California that is actually selling Kobe's um, for an inflated price. Now, I think it, it's one thing when it is a just a reseller, right? Like if it's someone just like a normal person in the community, they can just go buy the shoe and they can sell it. Like that's one thing, right? But when it's someone who is literally getting product from Nike as a distributor for Nike, right? And then they are the ones that are reselling the shoe for more than what the retail price is. Now, granted, the MSRP manufacturer or um, yeah, manufacturer suggested retail price is just a suggestion based off of that name, right? It still feels wrong. Um, I think it would be hard to find someone that would say that that is something that is good to do um, or is right. Like it, it feels wrong, you know. Um, but that retailer, um, not not only are they doing that, but they're actually sort of lying too. So um, the owner of uh, the company is on social media telling people that that price that he is quoting people is only for resellers. That if you're trying to buy the shoes, you get them at retail if you come into the store. So you know the way that the community works um, whenever there's something like this. So what actually happened is someone had their kid call into the store um, asking to purchase the shoes and how much they would sell the shoes for. And even when that kid called, they quoted that kid the same $350, uh, resale price. So even with that, um, there's someone being quoted that price to a kid who you would assume is not a reseller, I guess, as a store owner, but you know, maybe that's still going to be the sort of the stance that, that he takes. Um, but then there's also even a video that like, right as I was getting ready to start recording this, I saw, um, that sock jig retweeted, but was, um, was someone going into the store, like with an undercover, like video, like just like holding a phone in their hand while they were recording. So like, <laughs> and even the same thing happened where they were quoted that $350 as the price for the shoe. So again, you know, there's probably not anything legally wrong with this because it is just a suggested retail price. Right. But it, it feels wrong to me. Um, and feel shady too because it's one thing if you're going to do it and then stand behind it and say that you're doing it but to do it and then act like you're not doing it it makes me wonder if nike's going to do anything i don't think they will again because it's just a suggested price i'm sure the store is going to sell the item for what they want to but it seems wrong and it's something where if you're trying to grow a business people are not necessarily going to take kindly to you just taking advantage of them pretty much because you can, because you have the contract with Nike, because you have the product. So it'll be interesting to see and follow that story. I'll keep you guys updated as I hear more about that on future episodes. Um, if there are any other updates on the Kobe uh, reselling story. Um, but let's get into, <coughs> excuse me, let's get into some releases. I need a cough button, especially while I'm still, uh, still coughing a little bit. Um, Sorry about that break there. Um, but so let's let's get into some releases for the like, release over this past week. So um, first was the Yeezy 350 V2 Marsh. Uh, so this was that yellow Yeezy. Um, if you see on social media, it's piss colorway is what some people are saying, but with the reflective stripe um, through the middle of it. So these released on the first of February. Um, I was able to cop two pairs. Um, using the Chrome guest user. If you don't know what that is, by the way, I've seen some people on Twitter and um, people that listen to this podcast too, if you're more of a casual uh, sneaker sneaker enthusiast or you're not um, really aware of how that works, just Google um, like Easy Supply or Adidas uh, Chrome guest user or like easy copying Chrome guest user or something. You'll, you'll find something. If you have any issues with it, just tweet or, uh, drop a DM on our Instagram and I'll, I'll, I'll link you to a video as well. Um, showing you how to get that, but, um, or how to use that, excuse me, but it's still copying manual. I don't use bots or anything like that, but it does make it a, increase your chances of getting a pair a little bit. So with that and with it being a little bit less of a hyped shoe, I was able to get two pairs. Now, I'm not going to be wearing these. I, I, I did buy to sell, but um, the profits aren't even going to be 
great or even anything at all. Um, at least not initially. I'll probably have to hold for a little bit because this was a shoe that if I would have probably thought a little bit more about it, it's not a shoe that a lot of people wanted. Um, I didn't really see much talk in the community about this being a pair that people were looking to cop. Um, so if you do need any uh, yellow Yeezys, I got a four and a half and a five on the way from Yeezy Supply. They actually shipped like super, super quickly. Um, but kind of buyer's remorse on my end one thing that was funny during the the release of this one was while you were on like the loading page in the waiting room um especially like towards the end of the release the sizes were starting to sell out uh they actually had uh words of encouragement <laughs> on the yeezy supply site and it was saying don't give up as it was spinning and making you wait in the waiting room which is hilarious like i've never seen anything like that before like they're trying to get you to stay there like please don't leave we need to sell all these shoes please don't go anywhere please stay um so yeah giving you words of encouragement to tell you to keep staying in the waiting room um and going back to that like again this not being a shoe that i think a lot of the community would wanted to actually wear um I think that the hype will pick up a little bit, you know, always when um, when a shoe's readily available um, and it's also not really the time of season, like it's a little bit cold outside still, or not a little bit, it's, it's still cold outside, so a brightly colored shoe is not something that's going to do very well, so towards spring and summer, it'll probably pick up in price a little bit, but again, with it being a yellow Yeezy, I don't, I don't know how many people are actually going to be looking to want to wear it, and that sort of just makes me wonder, like as I look at the outlook of Yeezy for 2020 so far, at least the shoes that have been announced or rumored, um, I don't really see a ton that I'm like super, super excited for. Um, I think aside from the 700 V3 that's coming um, supposedly this month, we'll see. Um, aside from that, like I don't really see anything that is super, super enticing to actually wear. Now, obviously there's going to be profit to be made on some of these shoes as they come out, but a lot of it is like very similar colorways or just models and that you're just tired of seeing. So it'll be interesting to see what Yeezy is going to be able to do because Nike is taking steps forward with their collaborations that they're, they're, they're doing to introduce new designers, to introduce new ideas. Even that J Balvin sneaker that I was just talking about, like that is something that is very different than other Nikes that you're going to see. Um, even though that's going to be more limited, so you, like not very many people are going to be able to get those, but it's still something that they're doing that's different. And whereas Yeezy is doing a lot of the same stuff. So with their hype dying down um, and the colors being so similar, you wonder if they're going to be able to sustain sellouts every week when they're pumping out shoes. Um, it does sort of look like the way that they're they're going to try to limit um, and keep the hype up for Yeezys is by making them a little bit more limited. I'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into some of the upcoming Yeezys um, in terms of how they're releasing. But even for these um, these Yeezy Marshes, the yellow ones that released, um, they were only a Yeezy Supply exclusive. So you couldn't buy it anywhere else. And Yeezy Supply generally for most releases is limited to the U.S. only. So if you were outside of the U.S., you can't really get these shoes easily without getting them on aftermarket. Um, so, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens moving forward with that. So the second release, or I should say what should have been the second release of this past week were the Strange Love SB Dunk Lows. These are the pink SBs that are all velvet. I actually don't think I talked about them last week, but what ended up happening with this was, was kind of crazy. So they were supposed to release on uh, February 1st, just like the Yeezys, um, on uh, the Strange Love site. But for some reason, I don't know exactly why, but they were put up on the site the day before and it just said coming soon, but they were put up with coming soon, but they were not protected in any way. So even though it said coming soon on the site, you could still check out pairs. So obviously what happened is bots ate, right? So bots got a bunch of pairs. There are also people who hit manually using add to cart links from cook groups or, you know, different monitors that people are a part of. Um, and that just sort of threw the whole release for that into chaos because what was supposed to happen originally was on that February 1st release, there was going to be a special box that was released only on the site. 
and then there would be regular releases at skate shops on the 7th of February and then on sneakers on the 8th of February. Um, what's happened now is at least, um, what's happened now is that release actually got canceled on the 1st of February. So everyone who hit pairs on the 31st of January, that released, it was too early. The bots got and some manual users got every single order from that got canceled. Um, and then the strange love, um, company actually put up Instagram posts essentially blaming bots for um, for copying early and that's the reason they had to cancel the release but I actually think that's sort of a that's sort of a cop out right like there whoever is responsible for loading the product onto the site you need to put protection on that right because some people that purchased were not bots right so for you to say the bots are the reason that this shoe is being canceled for this release is not fair right um, and at the same time, like if you see a shoe that's available, even if it says coming soon, if you can purchase it, who's not going to purchase it if it's a shoe that you want, right? Like even shoes that sometimes will drop early on like finish line before Foot Locker, sometimes days or weeks before you go into a store and only one store has a shoe. If the shoe is there available to purchase, like people are going to purchase the shoe if they want the shoe. So I don't think it's really fair to say to somebody that like that's the fault of bots. Now, I'm, I'm sure there are people that that don't agree with that opinion. Um, but that's just my opinion on, on the matter. But so what's happening with the release now is, um, what they're going to do is some of the like big skates, some of the big skate stores, um, like skate park of Tampa, um, for example, will be getting the special box release in store at their store just for a limited number of pairs. Um, but I think what's also going to happen is there's going to be a lot of pairs that are backdoored. Um, and that's sort of the sentiment that's going around the community that some people are actually like saying like conspiracy theory stuff that this was the plan all along was to uh, try to get pairs to not release online or not to have to sell it online, which I think is a little bit too far in terms of in terms of I don't I don't see why you would make this big um, thing about it just to just to just to do that. I, I guess it would, it would sort of hide the fact that you were doing that, but it just it seems like too much of a too much of a thing to do uh, all of that just to cancel it um in the long run um and and that be the original plan i think they, they may have had a backup plan like they did mention on their instagram but I don't, I don't think that their their idea from the beginning was to just do it but i i wouldn't be surprised now if a bunch of pairs are back door to friends and family um and it's gonna make the shoe i think not necessarily more difficult to get because it was already super limited but i think now that it has happened like everyone, even people that weren't aware of the shoe coming out on that site and in stores are going to be aware of it now because of the commotion that was caused on social media, on social media. So, um, cause lots of people have been tweeting about it and retweeting about it. And now you're going to have people that are going to be lining up at skate shops trying to get this shoe. Whereas people probably wouldn't have been aware of it. The good thing is it is also releasing on sneakers. Um, so I do hope to be able to get a pair on sneakers. I, I will try to check my local skate shop crush too, to see if they're going to get any pairs, but I'd be surprised if I'm able to get from there. They're, they're usually pretty limited in the number of pairs that they get. So, um, I'll be, I'll be trying for these, but again, I don't think I'm going to get them. And, uh, these look dope though. Um, it's like this pink velvet, pretty much all over sneaker, um, really goes along with like the Valentine's Day theme and everything like that. Um, but so let's uh, let's transition into some of the rest of February. So, <clears throat> excuse me, two big releases so far in February um, that we've talked about. The next one coming up is on February seventh. Um, we've got a Dunk Low, the Plum. Talked about these last week about the fact you know that they were uh, the first true or the first re-release of these since two thousand and one. Um, these are not an SB for anyone that may be confused. So if you are looking for these, you're not going to see them at your skate shop. Um, they are releasing on sneakers and they'll be releasing on other outlets too, but they won't be in any skate shops unless they also just carry Nike sportswear in general and get Nike shipments other than skate, Nike skate stuff or Nike SB stuff, excuse me. Um, but those are releasing on February 7th. Then also on February 7th, like I was just mentioning the strange love SB dunks, are coming out to skate stores and then on 8th on february 8th they'll be coming out on sneakers um also on february 8th we have the the air jordan 1 high 80 85 the og cut 
Um, talked about those last week as well, but that's the black and red uh, shoe, white midsole, really clean, uh, higher price point, which is interesting at $200. So they already raised the price of Jordan 1s this year for the regular Jordan 1 highs from 160 to 170 These high OGs are going to cost $200, which makes the um, 350 price point for the um, the new beginnings pack even more like it's 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 a good it's a good deal essentially to get both of those shoes um but so new new price of 200 for those jordan one highs they're, they're still going to sell super well they're limited to 23,000 pairs worldwide which is just it's ex- very very exclusive so i would say most people don't expect to get your hands on these um obviously try if you if you want these shoes or if you're looking to sell these shoes but most people are going to strike out and um, a lot of uh, retailers are going to be raffling just because with a shoe this limited if you try to release this first come first serve like stuff's going to happen bad stuff's going to happen whether whether it's people being upset with bots eating everything or um, just people fighting for the shoes out in the streets so Definitely one that keep your eyes. I think End already has raffles open for these sneakers and stuff, different places like that. But all your typical big, big accounts should. Oh, ooh, voice just cracked there, man. Going back to, going back to puberty. But um, all your typical big uh, sneaker accounts should have these shoes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, on February eighth or ninth, actually, it's a little bit confusing. But this actually just happened this morning. Um, where Yeezy Supply put up that the Yeezy 700 MNVN um, that has the 700 logo or the 700 number on the side um, is going to be releasing in-store only um, in New York, London, and Tokyo. So this is going to be a limited Yeezy release. So what I was talking about a little bit before, how it seems that Yeezy is doing different things to try to limit their releases. Um with the Ashias, there were even though they released in your traditional foot lockers and everything, there were less pairs than normal and more limited than people expected. So those sold out. Um, and then with the marshes that released on the first um, yesterday, actually, they uh, they were only available on Yeezy Supply. We've seen that before on the magnets and some other shoes. But and then for these ones, they're available, but only in um, specific retailers in specific regions. Um, and only in three places uh, or three cities um, in the world. So it's going to be interesting. There, 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 there may still be a later release of these. Like the the thing with Yeezy that you always have to just keep in mind is they, they restock stuff um, pretty frequently, even even limited stuff. So this, this could always come out later available to more places. But um, this one's going to be interesting. It's an all black 700. The 700 on the side is is like all 3M. So there's a lot of 3M on this shoe. Um, and the retail price point is 220. So for the 700 V1 and V2, um, those were $300 retail. The V3 brought it back down to 220 after they removed the boost. Now this one still has boost, but the upper of the shoe, instead of it being all the different materials that were on the V1 and V2, um, you know, you have suede, you have mesh, you have all these different things, right? The MNVN one is just like one material upper pretty much. So the shoe actually looks kind of cheap in the pictures that I've seen, but a black Yeezy is always going to sell out pretty much. So I still expect these ones, especially with how limited they are, to be very difficult to get. Um, and so if you are looking out for them, if you can be in those cities around or for the release, you're obviously going to increase your chances, but you're probably going to have to pay resale price for them. Um, so good luck if you're going to try to get those. Um, on February 10th, we have the air fear of God one that string colorway. I talked about these last week as well. That's the white, black and the oatmeal. Um, again, we'll be trying for these hope to get them would be the first pair that I actually, would get and would be able to rock. Um, I think I would actually keep these two if I got them um, just because it, it is like a crazy good colorway. I, I love these and would absolutely want them to be added to the little sneaker wall behind me here. Um, on February 12th, we have the uh, Air Jordan 10 uh, wings. Now th- these are dropping as part of uh, a sort of a collection of shoes that are, that are coming on various dates. Um, in February and mid-February, but 
because the uh, NBA All-Star Weekend is in Chicago, it just sort of fits. Like there's a Chicago collaborators sort of list of shoes coming out. So it's these uh, Air Jordan 10 wings. Now the wings program um, essentially like uh, puts together uh, like design programs and um, for for like kids and, and and stuff like that so essentially what this is was this shoe was designed by four different high school students um, from various Chicago uh, youth design organizations so they all came together and created this shoe not a shoe I'd personally wear it's like white with silver and a few different colors um, and it's got multiple like pull tabs on the heel so it 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 looks different. Um, it's interesting that Jordan seems to be making a push for Jordan 10s. You know, you had the Super Bowl Jordan 10s that came out that had like the sort of Palm Beach trees or whatever. Um, you had the um, the Soulfly Jordan 10s that were auctioned off for charity. And now you have these Wings Jordan 10s. Again, not, I don't know. It just, it, it looks a little bit little bit weird of a shoe and the Jordan 10 is not really a, a big design right now but it does look like Jordan's trying to push those out um, in addition to that um, that's coming from that Chicago collaborator shoes uh, collect our collection you have the uh, Air Jordan 1 mid by uh, Sheila Rashid uh, these are these look really really cool um, it's like a gray suede shoe and it has like that dipped front um, that looks very similar to like if, if you remember the um, the Ivy Park uh, night joggers that were like had the dipped toe on that one maroon and orange pair. It looks very similar to that in the Jordan one, except that dip is purple and the, sh the rest of the shoe is like a dark gray suede. Um, so those shoes look pretty good. Um, they're Jordan mid. So you sort of wonder uh, how limited or available they're going to be and, and how well they'll do because they are a mid. Um, but still a good looking shoe, not one I would wear, but a good looking shoe overall. In addition to that, as part of that pack, um, you've got the off white Jordan fives from Virgil Abloh, you know, also another Chicago native. Um, obviously these are, these are super hyped. Everyone's looking for these, um, whether to wear or to sell, you'll see these all over the place after the fact that people cop all over social media, people rocking them. Um, I talked about these last week, the fact that um, I'm not particularly interested in wearing these and I don't really like the design. I don't like the holes cut through them. But again, an off-white on a popular Jordan model, it's going to be it's going to sell out. It's going to be a pair that people are looking to get. So keep an eye out for those if you are looking for those. And then the last of that um, sort of Chicago collaborators pack is the Jordan Aerospace 720. Um this is in a lyrical lemonade colorway, which is a uh, representation for like a media company by Cole Bennett. Um, so these, I think if, if it was a different silhouette, I would say that these look good. The, the aerospace 720, I think it's designed this way, but it looks like something from the future. It's got that huge air max 720 bubble on the bottom, which is just way too big and just looks a little bit ridiculous, but the colors of the shoe themselves, it's like this blue color, um, with s just like splashes of other colors there as well. Um, it looks, it looks good for the color, but on a different model, I think that shoe would do really well, but this one probably is one you'll be able to get your hands on pretty easily because again, it's not a silhouette that a lot of people are looking to wear. Um, so those are, those are the four shoes, um, as part of that Chicago collaborators pack, uh, some other shoes that are going to be coming out in February, uh, around that same time, we've got the, uh, UNC to Chicago, um, Jordan one again, brought these up last week, but, um, they're looking to be somewhat available right now. The, the resale price is not too high above retail, at least considering, um, considering the fact that, you know, they haven't released yet and the price likely will dip after the release happens. Um, these aren't too far out of reach, I think. And, um, with the extended sizing and it being a woman's shoe, I think even if you're not able to get these initially, um, I don't think you'll have to pay too much if, if you do want these. Um, they're split half and half like the white pair was previously from the Fearless collection that sort of had a similar design where it was UNC to Chicago as well with this one just coming in black instead. Um, also releasing around that same time for the All-Star Weekend is uh, the Air Jordan 1 uh, and Airship New Beginnings Pack. Again, this also has that high OG. I, I know I talked about this a little bit earlier, but um, that's another shoe to keep an eye out for. Um, <clears throat> and then 
for this month there were a bunch of shoes like i i know i did a little bit of a preview last week but there were a bunch of shoes that sort of just like popped in that um i wasn't really aware that we're going to even be coming out this month so one of those is actually the easy quantum basketball shoe now when i was talking about how i i don't really see a lot on the horizon for yeezy like this is even a shoe that although it is a new silhouette from yeezy i wonder how much how many people are going to actually be looking to get this shoe it's it's, it's just a little bit it's a little bit weird looking i would say it's not one that i personally want to wear um you know that could change having it in hand like I, I will fully be the first to admit that you know my opinion may change on this shoe but right now seeing the picture seeing it on feet i don't know it just it doesn't look like something that i would wear but anyway that, that one's rumored for february 14th nothing is confirmed from that one and so pe people have been saying that it's supposed to drop during all-star weekend so it could very well happen, but um, we'll have to wait and see because there's been no real news about this. There's no announcements. Now, with Yeezy, stuff generally happens pretty last minute. The marshes, uh, I think maybe four or five days before the drop was when they just showed up as coming out that weekend. Um, these these new uh, 700 MNVN that are dropping limited to stores, that information just came out today. Today's the second. Those are coming out on the 8th or the 9th. I think Adidas, for those, said the 8th and um, Yeezy Supply updated the dates to say the 9th. So it could be either or. But again, that's less than a week ahead where you're getting the information for that. So the same thing could happen. You know, next week, this time, next Sunday, right? There could be information coming for the Quantum basketball shoe um, to, to, to actually say that those are releasing. So keep an eye out. Definitely um, be st staying tuned uh, to Yeezy Mafia. We'll probably put something out as well as like if you're, if, if you're in sneaker Twitter, um, or if excuse me, if you're on Twitter, sneaker Twitter, soul links, accounts like that will will keep you updated on on those types of releases. Um, uh, moving on to February fifteenth, this is a shoe that like I've I've seen. I think Sneaker Bar Detroit still has it on their release calendar, but I really question whether this is going to release. It's the Yeezy seven hundred V three in the triple black colorway. It just I'm not saying it can't happen, but it would be really weird to me to drop two 700s a week apart from each other um that are all black i don't know i again i i wonder about the release strategy it doesn't make sense to me but maybe the v3 they they want to make it because that that's going to be limited as well just like the v uh three the original azale was i, I would assume that this one's still going to be pretty limited being an all black they generally haven't dropped like tons of pairs of all black Yeezys whenever they do release so I'm surprised to see that this is still on that calendar. But again, there hasn't been any news about it, so it may not actually be happening. Um, on the 15th, continuing as well, we've got the Red Cement Jordan 3s. Um, I talked about the that there were two versions last week, but I didn't actually mention what the second version was. But so there's the standard Nike Air version. Um, and then there's a version that has, um, again, because this is releasing during Chicago All-Star Weekend, um, there's a Chicago only specific pair. Now, there's no word yet on whether that Chicago only pair will actually uh, release like or excuse me, what the release process will be for those. Uh, the only difference between the two shoes, as far as I can tell, at least is on the back heel on one of the pairs. Instead of saying air, it just says shy. Um, so is it really worth the additional money if you're from Chicago for that shoe? Cause you can get the other shoes for pretty much retail right now if you wanted to. So to pay, I think it's like an additional $200 or something like that, that they're selling for right now to pay that additional money on top, just to have shy on the back of the heel. I don't think it's worth it personally, but to each their own, um, if you're a Chicago native, um, good luck if you're trying to go for those. Um, and then the last shoe, again, still just sort of running through mid-February, is the Nike Adapt BB 2.0. Um, the retail for this is $400, which I'm surprised they raised it $50 from what the Nike Adapt uh, BB the first version was, because like that's already a shoe that like people are like, do I want to pay $350 just for a shoe that laces itself up? Um, and does so very loudly. Now, the styling for this new shoe is way more aggressive, a lot more sharp edges, um, and the shoe looks better in my opinion. Um, but again, four hundred dollars 
for a shoe like if they're battery problems what do i do right like if the charging mat breaks like am i gonna have to reach out to nike and get a new mat are they gonna give me a new mat um like how is that gonna work right so i don't know four hundred dollars for that shoe it's not something that i'm gonna be looking to buy personally but there are a lot of people out there that you know may, maybe they're more tech enthusi- tech enthusiasts excuse me or are just sort of more into collecting those shoes. the the first pair um, The first pairs of the Adapt BBs definitely flew, and then some of the like more limited colorways, like the ones that looked like the Air Mags, uh, went pretty quick as well. Um, so I'm sure there's still gonna be people that are interested in these, but um, not for me personally. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing off of the mic. I'm wondering if it's actually picking it up. I guess we'll see when we uh, when we hear the episode, but. Um, for the remainder of February too, like there's still so much more coming. Like I haven't even mentioned yet. So all those shoes I just mentioned, you got off white in there. You got a new Yeezy model in the quantum basketball. You got all these all-star weekend shoes, fear of God, all this stuff. Right. Even with all that, there's still shoes that are remaining to come out. So that the MNVN 700, there's an orange colorway that's going to be coming this month as well. The black history month sneakers that Reggie and I talked about a couple weeks ago, um, those still are releasing mid February, um, or mid to late February. Uh, you've got the 380 mist coming potentially. You got the Travis Scott SB dunk coming. You've got the Sakai's both the black and the white coming. So you can really see like there's a ton, ton, ton still left in February. We're just getting started with the releases we've had so far. And even when we get past all-star weekend, um, and we sort of get past that initial really big big wave there's still a ton of uh a ton of sneakers coming that um are gonna be really interesting to look even for march honestly lots and lots of shoes coming so um if you haven't spent any money yet so far on sneakers don't worry there'll be plenty more opportunities um and i'm gonna actually have to try to move some either clothes or shoes because i don't want to go into my credit card (laughs) trying to trying to buy these shoes so um yeah let's keep it moving let's keep it moving so Speaking of some some news and, and rumors uh, going on, uh, so Reggie and I, I don't know if it was episode like maybe five or six, um, but we talked about the Fugazi um, custom that was done. Uh, the first colorway was like the Chicago colorway. It was a uh, black, white, and red. Uh, there have been pictures coming uh, more and more of an, a second colorway it's like a white and gray colorway so this is that one in the chamber custom that had the gun as the uh the nike swoosh um with the bullets on the shoe and stuff like that so um another colorway of that is coming so keep an eye out for that should be releasing soon from fr- from the way it's being tweeted about and um posted on instagram and stuff i think it's going to actually be february maybe towards the end of the month but it could could be march or, or later as well but it's, it's definitely something that's going to be coming coming pretty soon um in addition to that uh there have been some pictures that have been popping up of an all black fear of god one um so again that fear of god uh, one silhouette is going to be a staple for Nike. It seems they're going to keep putting colors out for that. There have been colors that have been seen worn by Jerry Lorenzo that haven't even, um, haven't even been released yet. So that's going to be an all black one that, uh, looks like is going to be coming, uh, sometime in the future, but definitely pictures have started surfacing of that already. Um, and I, I, I like the all black one actually. Um, I don't know that it's something that I would personally want to rock because an all black shoe for three fifty high top two. I don't know. I don't know. It's it, it just seems like something that's a little bit more. It's it's a little bit too plain for that silhouette. Just personally, in my opinion, but an all black shoe is pretty easy to wear. So in general, those are gonna those are gonna fly. Um, tra- for Travis Scott, there's there's always news. It seems like Nike is gonna make him. Well, not not gonna make him. He already is, but he's like the main or one of the big advertisers right now in terms of whenever they have either silhouettes that aren't working or aren't selling, they want to put him on it or if they just have some marketing campaign that they want to put behind him. So there's going to be a Travis Scott Air Jordan 5, um, not confirmed officially by anyone, but some trustworthy um, leak sources have been have been uh, tweeting out pictures of mock-ups for this shoe. So it's going to be that olive green color that you used to for, for Travis Scott, sort of matches the hat, this Stussy hat I'm actually wearing right now if you're watching the video. Um, but 
this uh, shoe looks pretty good. Not a huge fan of Jordan 5s. So again, for me, a cop for these would be for resale only. But these are rumored to come in 2020 at some point. So probably later in the year. Um, but still, you're going to get more and more Travs um, releases. Um, I think R Reggie was saying that he's he's not really a fan of uh, these ones as much, that they're getting a little bit more plain. I, I, I agree as well. It seems like that um, some of the the big <coughs> the big hits that were made um, initially with Trav are sort of fallen to the wayside a little bit in terms of the the, the, the design. I know a lot of people are, are still going to like these fives, but they, they just seem a little bit more plain. I, I guess it is sort of going back true to form to what he was doing with like those Air Forces or even with the the sixes that released initially. Um, those uh those sixes that released uh, earlier in in 2019 um it's, it's it's sort of going back to a more clean design compared to the most recent air forces and then also the sb dunks that are coming at the end of february it's a little bit of a cleaner wear um and that traditional sort of military or uh camo green color um so that's that. That's one uh, news of Travis. And then another thing is the uh, Cactus Jack uh, Instagram account actually tweeted out, <coughs> excuse me, pictures of uh, Travis Scott Air Force One. It's like multicolored, has like some X's like stitching into the shoe. So it definitely fits with the the Travis Scott sort of design scheme that you've seen before. But this this pair, I don't think is actually going to release. Um, the the, the 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 leak account that i got it from i think over under is the instagram account but um what what they were saying was essentially that it was likely just a mistake by somebody um because it was a one of one pair that was made for travis scott <coughs> man i'm coughing a lot so like this is why obviously reggie's not sitting next to me um wasn't coughing at all today but i guess talking for you know half an hour nonstop is gonna just make my lungs not want to do this but um so that 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 one did get tweeted out by the cactus jack account but deleted almost instantly <coughs> so as a result um i don't think that this one is going to actually release but again you never know the pair exists so whenever something exists there's always a chance that it can be made you know so so definitely keep an eye out for that. If there's any more information on that, we'll definitely be updating you guys on it. And the final um, rumor here is uh, this was, again, by that over-under account, I, I I get a lot of the leaks and the sort of upcoming releases, or not upcoming releases, but upcoming rumors from them just because they have been a credible uh, source of information for the most part. They get early pairs and stuff like that, um, as well as just collect that information from other sources that they see. But there is a uh, rumor of a Supreme Nike SB and Jordan collab, which would likely, with just the Jordan and Nike SB, would be a Jordan 1 low just based on the Lance Mountains that have released before, both the UNC and then that tearaway colorway. So um, no pictures of that have surfaced yet, nothing official. But again, it was it was tweeted out by a credible account, in my opinion. So definitely keep an eye out for that. That would be interesting to see, especially with the Air Force One being such a clean uh, design that Supreme is going to be dropping. Um, I, I think that they would probably do something a little bit more, a little bit more crazy um, this time around. If they're going to do another collab, I feel like they they're not going to do something real clean and simple like that again. And I, I know Reggie doesn't like those um, Supreme Air Force Ones. Um, I, I I differ in that opinion. I think. <coughs> I think they're clean. It is a little bit lazy, but I do see the appeal for some people who are who are looking to buy them because one, it's a base for customization, right? If if you're a Supreme head and you really fuck with Supreme hard, like there is a huge opportunity if you grab those Air Forces that are coming out to actually go and custom them or <coughs> or you know just just take them and and wear them as is and just have a real simple shoe. I don't think it's worth the additional money that they're going to cost, especially at resale. Like those things are going to resell for a lot. But I can, I can definitely understand why someone who um, is a Supreme head is, is going to enjoy uh, wearing those shoes. Um, but so keep an eye out for that with the Supreme Nike SB Jordan collab. Uh, that's the end of today's episode. Um, 
good luck to uh to anyone going for releases this upcoming week again um i do think the 49ers are going to win the super bowl today uh we'll see if i'm right or wrong on that prediction i've been wrong on pretty much all my football predictions that i've made on this podcast so far so good luck to both teams um hopefully those j balvin jordan ones drop and i get them if i do you will see those tweeted out instagram all of that so keep an eye out for those um and enjoy the rest of your weekend or or week when you're listening to this um thank you guys for listening to episode 12 take care and have a good day peace